So two weeks ago, I showed you that I cloned or copied some EQ settings with impulse responses and some people wanted to know how this works. And it's actually not very complicated. I show you this here in this video. Um, first, we use here an EQ curve analyzer. It's actually not needed, but it's cool to explain how this works. Um, so let's set this here as a generator. So we have here a generator and an EQ curve analyzer here as a receiver. And in between, we use now here an Ozone 8 EQ. And we want to use here a high pass, right? So let's open up here the analyzer. And we also enable here the phase setting. So now you can see this is in uh, zero latency mode. Uh, which means we have zero latency, but the trade-off is that we change the phase. As you can see here, we slowly offset the phase. And some people don't want that. They want to have a linear phase. And we can do this with this EQ here. And there's no linear phase EQ in Bitwig. That's the reason why you want to sample this probably. Um, so here there's a, a linear phase mode, which is called digital. So we switch this here to digital. And you can see now here, um, the face is completely flat. So nothing changes. But the trade-off is that we have now a latency here of 64 milliseconds because of that. And let's say you want to have some kind of uh, low cut at 30 hertz. You usually want to cut at 30 hertz some at some point um, to get rid of some rumble. It's not like that you need it on every track. Right, but sometimes you need a nice low cut at some point. And here you can do this or you can resample this with impulse response. So let's here also make the filter a bit steeper, 48 dB per octave, I think it is, or 48 pole. No, it's I think it's 48 dB per octave. Um, so now we have here a nice 30 Hertz low cut. So you can see here and no phase change. So how can we sample this now? So the easiest way is without using um, Bitwig only things, we can just utilize here the EQ curve analyzer, right? So we can go to the first instance and change the impulse response or impulse sample loudness here to zero dB instead of minus 12. So now it's normalized. So the sample that goes into the EQ is exactly zero dB. You can see this also here on the view meters and also in here. And then it goes out of the EQ here at the end. And we can just intercept the signal with a, a rolling sampler. That's that's how I, I do it most of the times because it's just so easy and straightforward. You can see here we sample this, um, the output. You can just highlight here something and then zoom in with the scroll wheel or with the mouse wheel. And all we need to do now is we create another track and let's use the also an EQ curve analyzer so you can see set this generator. And in between now here we use an a convolution device and here's just a normal reverb in there all the way up, all the way up. And then we just take here one signal or one part and drag this in. You can see this is now 62 milliseconds long. It's exactly the, or not exactly, but kind of the same, roughly the same latency here. And the pre-ringing is needed in order that the low cut works perfectly. You can see here in the signal coming out of the convolution reverb, we have a low cut. Right? The face is completely flat. So now we copied basically this EQ setting here from the Ozone 8 to the convolution reverb with just yeah recording the output of um, yeah of this uh, Ozone 8. It's actually very straightforward. So if you don't want to use the EQ curve analyzer or you don't own it, right? Or uh, let's say you don't have the rolling sampler and you don't want to use the rolling sampler. You can do it in a different way. Um, 
it involves or it uh, uses the um, test tone. So the des test tone here, need to have the mix here at 100%. The test tone has here this Dirac or di Dirac. I don't know how it's called in English. In German, it's just the Dirac because that's the name of the scientist. Um, Dirac or mathematician. I, I don't know what he was. I think he was a mathematician. Um, and then we pull this down to um, the lowest frequency here and then we get some clicks, right? So we just sample here a part bounce, no dither, 32 bit post fader. And then we have in here, let's zoom this in. You can see we have here a click in there, right? This signal. And what I do sometimes is I just, uh, let's say, use here a sampler. You maybe don't need to use a sampler. You can just play this one back here. Um, let's track this into the sampler here and uh, zoom in. Oh, actually, yeah, don't let's let's use the signal here. I think it's better. Just single this out. Something like this. You need to uh, include your, by the way, the, uh, what's the name, the latency. You need to include the latency here. So you don't need to, you don't want to go with the signal to the beginning, right? You want to have it here um, in the middle. So let's loop this. And this is the impulse. And on that, we use um, the ozone 8 again. And we do the same thing, digital here, pretty steep. Let's go this time to 120 hertz, just for the for the example here. And all you need to do, do now is to um, bounce this. Post fader 32 bits, right? And you can see here, we have a result. And then we use an EQ curve analyzer again. And here we use convolution again. And then we can use this sample here and put it in there. Right. Looks something like this. Uh, it's not really sure that's correct um so what you need to do now is to figure out the exact latency or the length you can just delete this here and make this way shorter something like this right and then resample so that's that's more or less the hard part that you need to find the latency length here, um, the correct one. Um, files to the stone bounds. This one is 107 milliseconds long. It's still too long. I mean, it still works here, as you can see, but we don't want to use uh, too much latency. Um, can we see actually the length here in milliseconds? Uh, probably not. Huh? Okay, let's try this one. Bounce. Test tone 4. So that's much better. So we have some problems here, uh, but it's not really important, I think. But you can see how this works. And when you figure out here the correct correct length, you can reuse it for different or other EQ settings and then just bounce it out. So all you need to do is to use a Dirac signal, um, impulse signal and send it through the EQ, then record it at the output and um, 
yeah, if everything is zero dB or normalized, you can just put it into the convolution reverb here, put the wet gain up, put the mix all the way up and you can replicate the EQ setting. It's actually not very hard in my opinion. And if you own rolling sampler or the EQ curve analyzer, it's even faster uh, sometimes. Okay. So I want to show you this, how this works in Bitwig. I hope it's clear. Um, if you have questions, let me know in the comments down below, leave a thumbs up in the subscription. Thanks for watching and bye.